Good evening. This is the Elliott Wave update for the NASDAQ 100 and the S&P 500 for Tuesday, February the 21st, 2023. The markets did follow pretty closely to what my expectations were, uh, as I laid out in uh, last night's update. Speaking of last night's update, I want to just add a little bit to that conversation as I received several comments telling me that I was 100% wrong and that there, the failure doesn't exist and that my account was wrong uh, with this labeling, showing the five, the C, and the intermediate B because the five did not take out the high of wave three, so therefore it can't exist. I want to read in terms of what Elliot himself is talking about. Elliot used the word failure to describe a five-wave pattern of movement in which the fifth impulse wave fails to move above the end of the third. It usually can be verified by noting that the presumed fifth wave contains the necessary five subwaves, which this one does, and <clears throat> failures are not uncommon, especially in waves of small degree, which this one was. Failures give warning of underlying weakness or strength in the market and tell us more about the reality of stock market life than most of us care to hear. These are not my words. Those are Elliot's words. So just when we think we have it all wrapped up in a neat Elliot package, along comes a failure to cut short our expected target. So failures do exist. Elliot allowed for them. Elliot spoke about them. Elliot gave us the emotional responses to them. So, again, I'm going to ask that people that you are always welcome to leave a comment and always welcome to disagree with my count. But there has to be a level of civility and there has to be a level of conversation that needs to happen. Accusations and telling the world that I'm wrong is not appropriate. It's not what I'm looking for in the channel. So again, I'm just asking, you don't have to agree with me, but should you want to disagree and you want to write about it, tell me what your count is. Tell me what you think is going on and then tell me why you believe it's going on. Then we have a conversation and that's something that I do like to see within the channel. So picking up again here in the NASDAQ today, Thank you, by the way, for listening. Picking up today, we remain in that beginning stages of what I am going to be labeling as an intermediate C wave, and we're in the absolute first wave down within that. And as I've been counting, there was the top. That's the five, the C, and the intermediate B. So we're coming off in a one, two, three, four, and now coming down in that fifth. And the fifth may be done, at today's lows, or we may need to come down and touch this support before again moving back up in what I'm going to term is likely just going to be that fifth wave. Not, excuse me, I've come back up in a fourth wave or the next corrective phase up. So again, let me start over counting from here one, two, three, four. One, two, three, could be. So we got a little bit of a four, a small four, then another drop down that then completes likely this first segment or at least this third wave. So again, one, two, one of three, two of three, three of three, four of three, five of three. Then we get another four, then we get another five. So it still has more to unfold, more to unroll to the downside. Now, where can we start to put in some of our fibs? Well, we know for the entire third wave, I can draw something that's going to look like this, and I'm going to use the extensions. I'm going to go down to there, up to oop, there. So we can see that we've actually already, just within this, this measurement, oop, that did not come out right. I'm going to remove that, start over. Let me try to open this up a little bit so I can get these right. There to there. 
to there. There we go. That's a little bit better. So we basically still have that 12,024, which again is when we're in comparing or we're looking at the support levels for the C wave down. 0.236 absolute minimum, but it still could, could supply some support. Next down from there, within the context of the third wave, we have 11,988. So, yep, it does look like we might get one more small four, and then we get the balance of what I believe should be the fifth wave of this internal third. And then put a fourth wave in, and then do another decline to put in this first wave off of that high. So again, let's just take a look at that again. One of this first leg down. So it's all going to consist of five waves. That's one. That's two. One of three, two of three. Getting into three of three. So then we need a four. Then we need a five. So it could be a couple of more days, actually, before we get all of this then complete and then looking like we're likely going to start coming down closer to here. So I think we have a little bit more downside to do. Again, to kind of start to put in where I think little fours are going to come in. I would probably want to just shift this up and bring this back down like this. Because now we're going to get inside here. This is the one, two three, four, five, could be. One, two, again, remember what we're looking at. One, two, one, two. So one, one, and this is two. And now from that point, we're going to start to count this third leg. And here we have one, two, and then maybe a three, four, but that doesn't know. It, it kind of gets a little screwy, but we're going to have to allow for a lot of different things here. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five of three. So there's a possibility that the three is done. Again, one, two, one, two, three. Got a new of four. We need a little four. And then we come down in the fifth. And that then completes the third for, that began here. Right? This whole subdivision will be all done. One, two, three, four. Yet to be seen. And then we come back down. So this support level may contain what we have left in terms of the balance of a four excuse me, the balance of a three to move in then to a little bit larger of, again, counting here, one, two, one, two, three, four, five of three. Then we get four, and that'll be the fourth wave of this larger move. And then we get an additional fifth wave down to complete the first five down. So a little confusing, but you got to walk it through with me. And that's just kind of trying to cover all of our bases and make sure that everybody's getting a voice in terms of what part of the wave it is and catching all of the nuances that the market can toss at us. Our moving averages now, as I had suggested, that with a continued downside move, we got continued where all of the moving averages, in fact, the eight and the four are strongly just hugging the market and walking this all the way down. So they'll be the first to announce that little four. And we might get up to the eight. We might even get back up to the 20 in, in terms of that smaller four within this third. And then coming down, putting in the five, finishing up that third, putting in another four, and then an additional five to finish this first five waves down. Now, where can I start putting some fibs that can give us some indications of what we're doing inside here? Uh, well, first one that I can do is I can come uh, one, two, 
Yeah, I'm going to do there. This is just going to tell me where this little four or where this this fifth should finish. And again, we still have a uh, 12,080. And so probably going to come into there. But if I'm looking for the whole thing, 11,989 seems to be the number right there. And that's what I'm going to look for. And then we'll get that little bit larger of a four. And then we still got that fifth. So where then can I be looking? Let's take that one off. <laughs> and we're going to come down from, and this is where it's going to get sticky because we don't have all that much before we're sitting back down here at 11,988. So we still have those numbers are all in play. And then we have the additional that we wrote from here. So we're still all down into this high 11,900s. And then we're, we will be, I will be able to add additional fibs once we get additional moves in place. So right now, looking for a small four, an additional small fifth down to complete the internal third right that started here one two three we're looking to finish the three get a four and a five which might take us down to 988 maybe lower once i get that fourth wave i can tell you where the fifth's going to end up right now don't have it so it's too hard to kind of put it in i can do a couple of of um looks at and that would be if that is the bottom, and then we're going to go back up to this level, let's say. And we're looking for a fifth wave that's going to bring us into 87 and then 950-ish. And that's saying that it only gets above or it only gets back to 12,151 in this little fourth wave. So we got a lot of possibilities, but as it starts to unfold, I'll be able to do intraday type work and figure that out. So I'm still, bottom line here, still looking for additional downside to put in this first five waves down on the hourly chart. So the probability now of a total turnaround and a run back up, you can start to see that it's starting to lose probability. It's starting to lower itself on that probability scale. So I have not ruled it out totally, and I can't just yet. Although it's getting tighter and it's going to become more difficult for the market to start to move up and start heading towards above this high and then above 12,900 to get itself all the way up towards 13,000. It starts to find it a little bit more problematic from here. Up here? more reasonable. Down here, the probability scale continues to drop. And we did see that the squeeze kicked in a little bit harder today as well. So <laughs> moving averages still pointing lower. Looking for a small bounce. I'm Right now, I'm going to peg resistance at 12,152, excuse me, 152. And then next up would be our 20, which is a 12,225. That would be, to me, a little bit high uh, for a fourth wave, being that this is likely the first wave of that whole sequence down. One, two, three, four. So that's why I'm looking for a little bit less. Maybe up to 12,175-ish is a possibility. So first one is 55, 50 to 55, and then we have 75 to 80, 85. Those would be too reasonable when I'm comparing it to the moving average. Get one more leg down and do another four and do another little bit larger leg down. Still, I believe, ending up somewhere around 11,988 down to 11,050, 11,950. All right, let's move over. That was the NASDAQ. Let's move over to the S&P. Sometimes the S&P does feel a little bit cleaner. So we're going to do the same type of account. I know I'm not filling it in because it just gets too cluttered. But here again, there's the five, there's the B, there's the failure, one, two. Now the third is breaking down cleanly here. One, two, three, four, 
And that five looks complete down here. Now, initially, I had been talking yesterday that I felt that this, this wave down, this beginning of this wave down, had the potential and likely the power where it could get it down to 4,000, and it smacked it on the nose today. I was looking for it possibly to jump below 4,000, maybe get down to 39.91. But then you go over and you look at the SPX, and the SPX did close below 4,000 today. So what's that set us up for to tomorrow? We might see a really gangbuster get back above 4,000 type move in the SPX, which here would drive us back above 4020 and on upwards of 4040 up to 4065. Now, is that what I'm necessarily going to look for? Again, let's count it out and we're going to find out where wave one is. This is one, two, and now we're still one, two, three, four, five. What four can, uh, what's that first wave that it can't, that the fourth wave can't break? It's way over here. So 4104 is going to be that fourth that cannot, this, this, excuse me, it's going to be that first wave that the wave four cannot go over, cannot enter into the territory. Where that previous fourth is, though, is right here. So what do we do? Let's just take a one, two. And if this is going to be our complete third, let's go ahead and put in our retracement. It's a little bit different than in the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ is not this, this advanced. It may be, and I'm just missing it on the internal count, and we'll find out. Here, just a normal 0.382, normal expectations. 40.65. And here you have from that bottom, that low, because it's the price territory there up, 40.55 to 40.90. Here's the level I don't want to see it above, 41.03. So for tomorrow here in, in the S&P, I would expect a little bit of a bounce. Now, again, you can make your adjustments to your FIBS should the markets when Asia opened or again when Globex starts in our in this particular market in about 30 minutes, they could drive it down. And they put that low in and that's going to change your numbers for the expected fourth wave to come up. So again, let me review that account. One, two. Then we drop into the third, the three. One, two, three, four, five. If five still has a little bit more to go, then we will make the adjustments on our fibs by running it again from the top of wave two to the bottom of wave three, wherever it should be right now, we're taking it today's low, which is 4,002. Okay, so that kind of completes that. Taking a look at the moving averages here, they also are pretty much spelling the same thing. We now got the 200 turning lower. We now have the uh, the 200 EMA and SMA turning lower, the 50s turning lower, the 20 is heading sharply lower, the 50s now heading sharply lower. So the moves today give us a lot of confirmation that the B wave's over. The market is now going to pay attention to the fact that we continue to get hints from the Fed, hints from the bonds, hints from the Fed funds rate that rates are going up. In fact, I saw an auction today and they were in the T-bills. I believe the 26-week T-bills were above 5%. So we're there in terms of what our interest rates are beginning to tell us. So how far behind can the Fed be in, in raising rates more substantially than the, and then maybe we've got to raise the possibility that it's going to come in above 50 basis points, and we'll be back at a 75 basis points. So PMI flash came out, market reacted negatively. They tried to rally it off of that, but it didn't work. And then we found additional sellers initially right off of the bell this morning on the opening. We got a lot of buyer. We had a lot of buying activity, pushed the market up to session highs. Uh, before it was just like sold, 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 sold for the balance of the session. What that was this morning, your guess is as good as mine, but I'm going to assume it was how uh, traders and were coming out of Friday's expiration.
So um, that's really going to be about it for today. I think if I'm just going to take a quick look at the bonds, the the one that I'm going to talk about today, just so that we're because we're always got to keep an eye on these because they're actually front and center right now. The ten year bond. Again, I talked about this on um, on Sunday's update on the big picture update, and I had spoken about this level, one eleven point zero one zero, which is where this market basically closed today a half a pip above it and it hit it and it held that's also on the bigger scale a bigger fib it is the sweet spot it is 70.5 percent of this rally it's come now down and held this as i have been describing as far as the 10-year note is concerned is it's a major level a break below this drops us into what I would call a slight black hole. And the market could quicken its pace and drop down towards 109 very quickly. Now that would that would not be very healthy in terms of what we can be expecting. We had four and a quarter on on um October the 24th. If I took it that low, that low is October. Actually, this is my monthly chart. Let me go back over to where I'm going to go to my weekly chart. Eh, I can get it off of this next one. Sorry. Well, this futzing around. Um, was the 17th. So on the 24th, the 10-year the note logged a yield of four and a quarter percent. So... Last Friday, uh, as I mentioned in the update, so just to quickly go back over that, the market closed on the 17th. The market closed at 3.82%. We've now dropped quite a bit. So are we back to 3.95, closer to 4%? And if we drop again and equal that low, that's four and a quarter percent. And then it... And why I am talking about this now is, is not necessarily in conjunction with the rate as it is in terms of, remember that I've been counting that low, that October low, as a completion point for an intermediate degree A wave, which suggests that this move is a counter trend, granted, and it, but it's a B wave, and that will consist of a minor degree ABC. And as you can see, how I'm labeling it thus far, A, and this would be the minor B if it holds. Now, if I have to turn and count this instead of five, I have to count it as an ABC of itself. It could tell me two things one, the counter trend rally is done at this level, at these highs that we had closer to 116. And it, in my mind, is like going to show us the weakness in the bond price and the strength that's coming in terms of interest rate hikes. Because what we would be then looking for if this completed the entire B wave inside of this intermediate B wave, then we're going to be putting in an additional five waves down from this level versus this level. So that's a lot. That's going to be pointing to much lower than here. Then we're looking at like coming, you know, back towards 103, which was the low in 2008, 2007, during that whole cold debacle. That's where we'd be ending up. And it has to come in an additional five waves down. I have to bring this back to my daily. What am I looking at? One, two, three, four. We've got that. We've got it going. Maybe this is just the first leg. So again, you know, is that just going to be minor wave one inside this intermediate C wave, which is beginning here? 
And so there's so much that could be going on. And again, I'm bringing this up because should it start to break, the bond market is telling us, get ready, get ready, markets. The interest rates are going to go much higher than you are all expecting. And I have to say, it it is becoming more clear that if you're still going to walk into a narrative like, well, Fed's got to pivot, Fed's got to do this, inflation's dead, October lows are going to hold, you might want to rethink your analysis. You might want to rethink your position because you better start taking a look at the other side so that the surprise, which really shouldn't be, since we're getting all the hints, is not going to upset your own individual apple cart. So that's why I'm going to talk about those bonds today so that I can bring that in. That's at a major, to me, a major level that's going to dictate, in my view, the near-term picture. And what I mean by near-term is taking us through the balance of the first quarter. So we're really just looking for what can we start to look for between now and the end of March, which will be the end of the first quarter. And if it is holding and we're going to start to turn higher, then I'm going to believe or feel that, okay, this count is correct. And it's a minor A, a minor B, and we're in a minor C wave, which should take us above 116, bring us back into this arena where everyone is more relaxed and more relaxed about interest rates are feeling better about things, et cetera, et cetera. But right now, our markets are not really lining up to do that. So that's why I'm bringing it up now. We're keeping an eye on it. I'm going to continue to update it. The 30-year, again, also sits right above a level that isn't quite as severe as the 10-year, but you can see it broke, and it did break down below 124.11. Not by a whole lot today, but it did. Opens up the door for, uh, let me open this up so I can see it. It opens up the door for 123.16 to 123.08. And again, we then have additional 122.12, 121.30. This is the 30-year bond. The 30-year bond down here was uh, 4.40, 4 I believe, down here. So close to four and a half. And now we're coming back. And if this holds true, A, B, and this turns into a C, you can see that I, I could maybe one, two, three, four, five. Yep. But it's really kind of got to stop and it's got to turn. So we've got to pay attention to what the bond market is telling us because that, remember, top of the food chain, interest rates, treasuries, dollar or currency, corporate, retail. So we're still got to deal with, at the top, interest rates. What is this telling us about that sitting at the top? It has control of everything. That's why I am bringing it up again, and it's so serious, and that's why we dropped as heavily as we did. Because when that, that reality starts to set in, the only thing you're going to be able to do is to sell, because that is the appropriate thing in terms of what is the atmosphere, what's the condition of the market. Now, one thing, I, I'm going to do it again. I'm just going to go one more further because really many things rally around our 10-year note. Now, as I mentioned in my updates or that I did over the weekend, the two-year note, there's the low. There's the October low. A break there signals fairly cleanly that this bounce is over and rate hikes and rate rising is back on. And again, really, folks, what it begins to tell me is we have an additional five waves down to do from wherever this high is and that right now it's right there. Now, if I go back out here and I look at our, my monthly chart, our low is 101.83. Where did we come today? 101. Two five no one oh one two five oh we're within seven pips of hitting that low and breaking below it that's the two-year note the two and the ten that's where they base the in, the inversion on the two and the ten 
We looked at the 10, it's teetering. We're looking at the two, it's got closer to that low. So again, we need to pay attention and I will for us and I'll be continuing to update it for us. So again, that's where I'm gonna leave this off for tonight. You would think we'd get a little bit of bounce tomorrow because we had a pretty strong down day. And that may be possible, but we've also seen where the seriousness of what's going on may preclude a stronger bounce before we start hitting the skids again. Our next update will be on Wednesday, the 22nd.